3D scanning has become a core part of our manufacturing company over the past two years. There were some bumps and bruises along the way. So in this video, we're going to focus on five things that I wish I knew when we got started. Regardless of what kind of scanner you end up purchasing for, for whatever kind of application you're using, good preparation goes a long way and can save you a lot of time. And so we're going to talk about preparation uh, to begin with. Not preparation H, but preparation S for scanning spray and preparation M for markers. So different parts require different preparation. And sometimes you might say, well, this cast aluminum part it's so dull there's no reason to prepare this I can just drop it and scan it and you'd be right uh, but when you're talking about a part like this where it's chrome and it's got the uh, glossy black paint it's gonna require a lot of preparation to get a good scan while this requires preparation and this doesn't uh, parts like this can still benefit from good preparation now, let's get started with scanning spray With scanning sprays, there's basically two types. You have sublimating and non-sublimating. Uh, so this one is a type two non-sublimating. What does that mean? It means that it's not spray paint, it's not permanent, but it's like using foot powder, except it's designed for 3D scanning. So you can spray it on a part and it never, uh, sublimating is a nice word for evaporates. So it never evaporates. But when you start getting into sublimating, well, one thing you're going to notice first is the price is going to go up a little bit. So on the, on the non-supplemented spray, uh, you're looking at $20 a can, and I don't mind wiping a part off. Uh, but when you get into supplementing, you have several different kinds. Uh, like this one will evaporate in one hour, depending on your project. Uh, this one in a couple of hours, this one five to eight, and this one is supposed to take up to 12 hours. Now, that being said, everything in the environment will contribute to how fast these will evaporate. Uh, for instance, if I spray a part with one hour spray, one hour supplementing spray, uh, I can make it go away in one minute if I put a fan on it. So if you're working in a factory or if you're working in a shop where you're opening and closing the bay door or blasting air conditioning or something like that, then you might want to go with the longest supplementing spray, 12 hours, because worse Worst comes to worst, you can set the part up, put a fan on it, and it's all going to vanish anyway. Scanning markers. For a blue laser scanner, you have to have at least four of these visible at any orientation that you're scanning. And so that can be tough when you're scanning parts that are small. Scanning markers are used for two things. One, scanning the part, clearly. Two, for orienting or aligning your meshes from various scans to make one solid mesh, which we'll get to in just a minute. So when you're scanning something this small, you can 3D print little scanning marker posts that allow you to get a vertical scan as well as horizontal scans. That way, when you're scanning, you can come in on the side and it'll still pick up on one of these scanning markers on the side and it can pick up that part and you delete everything else. Uh, the problem with the 3D printed one is they're kind of light and so they can slide around. If they move, your scan is, is done. You can put a little sticky uh, rubber base on there and that definitely helps. What we did is machine some out of acrylic. We put that, that tacky rubber base on there and now you can press him down and he sticks very firmly to this base and so they're not sliding around like chess pieces on here. So when you're laying out your markers, keep in mind that these positions, well, they'll probably change. If you change from a 0.3 setting of maybe resolution, how much data you want to collect, uh, then these things can be kind of further out. But if you're going to scan with a real high tolerance of maybe 0.1 resolution, then these markers are going to need to be right up against your part uh, because you're your view of what you're capturing is going to get smaller so it can make sure it holds that very high resolution scan. And so remember, if you're doing a low quality, you can get out of here and you're going to be just fine. But the higher your quality is, the closer the markers are going to need to be to that part.
So when you have a part like this, you can't scan the top and the bottom. So you know you need two scans, and then we know we're going to need to align them in the software, right? So a top and a bottom. But you don't want to get caught up into thinking about this is the top of the part or this is the bottom of the part. Really, you're going to be scanning from multiple orientations of this part. For instance, on this one, we scanned in four different orientations to make sure we could get down as deep as we could go in some of these holes and channels, saw cuts, threaded inserts. We want to make sure we could capture all of that. The reason we don't want to think about it as up or down is you want to think about it more of as a principle. You want, when you go from one scan to the next scan, you want to have the most overlapping data possible, the most redundant features, so that you can use those redundant features to line up the features that aren't available on every scan. Now we want to align all of our scans, and we can do that by simply saying that I want to align my scans. You know, it makes sense. You want to start off with one scan here, and then your second scan here. Now here's some data that I do not have, but these are also oriented properly. So now I want to look around and say now that I've got these in the windows in the correct format, I want to say I want markers. I want this marker lines up with this marker, and this marker lines up with this marker, and then I think I've got this marker lines up with that marker. And then I can say apply. And now both of these are aligned in the bottom window. Now what I want to do is do the exact same thing and align the third to the first and the fourth to the first. So my first window will always stay the same. My second window will not show a different scan from a different orientation. I want to make sure I orient them correctly and find the scanning markers that correspond to that orientation. So here's our mesh that's all aligned, and now we're moving into post-processing it. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is if I hit the right side, click, that's what it thinks the right side is. In other words, it's not oriented to anything in space. There is no such thing as parallel, perpendicular, or concentric. It's just a data point cloud floating out there in space. And so it'd be nice to start orienting this to maybe a couple of planes, establishing a zero position, and then we're going to move into Geomagic Essentials uh, so that we can start cleaning up the mesh a little bit. So now we moved into measurement. We're simply going to say, I want to create a feature. I want to make a plane. I want to use three points. Hold down my shift button here. I'm going to make that plane. Create. Now I'm going to make another plane on this side, create, and then I'm going to make a plane up top here. Now we're going to use these intersections of these planes, like plane 1 and plane 2, and create a line there. Okay, so now we used all the planes and lines and points to orient it into a way where he's going to make sense when we import it into the CAD system. Now let's move into Geomagic Essentials and start cleaning up the mesh and trying to fix any holes or bridging any gaps. So right when we import him in, we can see we have our triad. It's lined up real nicely on the corner. Uh, definitely see some holes that I'm a little confused about. So we can say that we want to fill holes like inside of this circle here or this hole. Now the mesh cleaned up really good with the Mesh Doctor. Piece of cake. Now what we're going to look to do is maybe just do a quick smooth on it because some we still see we got kind of a weird pattern over here. Let's say smooth that and that's going to knock that down, uh, smooth off the top, uh, clean up the mesh a little bit and then we're going to dec decimate it and I think maybe you know 20 percent and we'll say apply. Make sure it doesn't just destroy it by being too low of quality. Uh, but by reducing the quality, it makes it much easier to email or send or uh, import in the Fusion since that's a cloud-based software. 
So when we go to save this, we're going to save it as an STL. Now there's a couple of different versions, but I definitely prefer the binary version because it makes the smallest file size. Okay, now we've got our scan. It's complete. We're going to import it into Fusion real briefly and just show you how to insert a mesh. You definitely want to use the insert mesh option because it gives you a little bit of control over that. And I know I saved it because I migrated computers. So I saved it on my uh, Dropbox 3D scans. Uh, and then this scan is for the video. I'm going to go ahead and import that in. You can see it's been decimated because the, the structure of the part uh, looks a little different. I'm going to show my origin. There he is, right where we set him. So that's all good. I want to make sure this is on millimeters because that definitely, the scanner always saves in millimeters. And so I know he's scaled properly. If I had any questions, I could go ahead and make a sketched box uh, that's the right size for this part. And then I know I got the right, uh, right setting for import. Now, you can orient him, you can move him if he's a little out. Um, it doesn't give you the nice box here, right? Uh, what I mean by that is, I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And I'm gonna grab this, uh, it says it's got a problem with the mesh. And then when I say move, notice it puts it in this nice little box here. So if I was out, I could see there is a little gap there, so I might not be perfect. See, in this little, this little gap over here, I'm going to take him and move him, and then I'm going to type in 0.1 millimeter. Uh, that's actually pretty close. It could be 0.2 millimeter, uh, 0 0.25, 0.3. Yeah, and that looks pretty close there. So I'm starting to get... So you can use this box to kind of get him in, orient him, uh, once he's in shape, you can say, okay, go to your mesh options. You say, I want to create a mesh section sketch. So like this, select the work plane you want to come off of. And then you can go down to the middle of the part. So once you get that profile of your part, you can hide. Notice that you can see a mesh section view here, and you can hide that. But you can go in and edit that sketch. Then you get a new option called Fit Curves to Mesh. Grab your line. And you can start drawing your part. And it kind of follows along this part. You can actually make quite a bit of progress pretty quick uh, with this really cool tool. Uh, making an extrusion. Doesn't take long to get something really accurate based on your scan data. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from these five tips of things we didn't know when we got started scanning, or at least didn't fully grasp. If there's something you'd like to see on our channel, please let us know. Make sure to comment below, and we'll catch you next time.